a very old Stuart S50 steam plant. This is part 18, applying the primer paint and making the pressure gauge siphon. In the previous episode I showed the partial assembly of the boiler casing and I initially painted it with some special paint to promote adhesion. Now I'm painting it using automotive red primer. I don't know what the strange marks are on the side of the boiler casing but I can't do anything about this but when the completed boiler is on the baseboard I'll make sure that this part of the side casing is at the back. The paint colour for the boiler needs to be terracotta and I was hoping that this primer would be near enough but it's not so I'll need to get some terracotta coloured paint. That's it for the painting in this episode, it's time to move on to the real job. I need to make a pressure gauge siphon assembly, but it's not the normal siphon assembly. This one has to have a special machine flange. Over now to the Boxford lathe to make the flange. I need to reduce this piece of brass bar down to 7 eighths of an inch in diameter. And the first part of the job, as always, is to face across the end. As my videos are always tutorials, what I'm going to do here is take two deeper cut. Initially it seems to be cutting fine, and this is quite a deep cut for a small lathe on a large piece of brass. I'll take an even deeper cut and see what happens. The first thing that you will notice is that the noise of the cutting has changed. And when I look at the waveform on the computer as I'm editing this, I can see that it's almost a perfect sine wave. This is because the tool starts to dig in and then lets go. If this was a piece of steel, I'm sure something would break. But in the end, I got away without breaking the tool. The next cut is not quite as heavy. And you will notice that the sound has changed from the chattering one to the normal sound of a lathe tool cutting a piece of brass. I have to reduce this centre part of the brass down to quite a small part. The outer diameter needs to be around 7 eighths of an inch, but the centre piece needs to be very small and the 7 eighths of an inch is there, as you can see, the micrometer clamps in place. Once again, in order to show how not to take too deep a cut on a very small lathe, I'm taking too deep a cut on a very small lathe. And although the lathe tool is cutting the brass OK, it's not getting a very good finish and the sound is not good at all. This is really lathe abuse, or at least small carbide tip cutting tool abuse. I'm going to leave the centre part a larger diameter than I need it because I think I might have a bit of a problem here. What I'm doing at the moment is rounding the end. Totally freehand, but it does the job. I've worked on Bassett Lope boilers before and I have seen the original ones which are made from castings. But this one should look okay when it's finished. The time has come to part off the piece that I need. And once again in this episode, just to illustrate the point, I'm applying too much pressure and the work keeps grabbing the cutting tool, but as it's brass, it's not strong enough to rip it apart. Once parted off, the next job is to reverse the piece in the chuck and drill from the other side. First of all with a centre drill, and now I'm using a twist drill of 1 8 of an inch in diameter. So that's the hole down the centre made. Now I need to drill a hole from the side to silver solder a copper pipe into. And I'm really sorry that the part's out of focus, but the end of the machine vice is quite well focused. This next part of the job is extremely dangerous, but my fingers are not quite as close to the blade as they look on the video. Health and safety warning, do not do this. Hold the metal part in a pair of pliers or something. As I've just said, I know it looks like my fingers are very close to the blade, but this is a very highly magnified image. I could have supposed put this in the vise and use a file to shape it. But I like to live life on the edge and this is the only excitement that I get these days. When I hold the shaped part up against the boiler, you can see roughly how it's going to look, although the centre piece needs to be a lot smaller. The first thing to do is to measure and drill two holes to mount it to the boiler using a pair of 7BA bolts. Or should I say, a pair of slot-headed, dome-head, 7BA machine screws, but I still call them bolts. So what's going on here, I've threaded the hole down the centre, which is 1 8 of an inch diameter, 4BA because 1 8 of an inch in diameter is tapping size for 4BA. I cut the head off a long 4BA bolt and I'm using what's left of the bolt to allow me to clamp the brass part in the chuck so I can turn it round the other way for the final cutting of the other side to the correct diameter. This fitting is one of the main focal points on the boiler back head, so it's really important that the bolts that hold it to the back head are equidistant from the outside edge of the flange 
to the centre part of the flange that sticks out. I'm also machining across the front just to make sure everything sits perfectly flat. For the final cut I'm going to turn the centre using the tool backwards so it's cutting away from the chuck. I do this fairly often, it may be a bad habit, but my logic tells me that the rear part of the cutting tool is sharper than the front because it's done less work. And after cleaning up the part with some wet or dry sandpaper and polishing it a little bit, it looks like this. Here it is fastened into the boiler backhead. Not perfect, but as perfect as the rest of the engine and boiler. And after I silver soldered the entire assembly together, this is what it looks like. When I make pressure gauge siphons, I prefer to solder the nut onto the pipe, tighten the pressure gauge into the nut and then turn the entire nut until the pressure gauge faces in the right direction. I find that the very small brass union cones that are normally used on the nut end of pressure gauge siphons to be very weak. The time has come to remove the pressure gauge and put the entire siphon into the acid bath. I'm dangling the pressure gauge siphon over the acid, not so that you can see the bones in the acid, which are taking an extraordinarily long time to dissolve. I did it so that you can see that I use the same silicone rubber tubing that I cut up for the water gauge to support the parts in the acid. There's just time for another coat of paint on the boiler casing. I left the pressure gauge siphon in the acid for a whole two days while I was at my daughter's wedding because it's very weak acid. And when I got it out of the acid and cleaned it up, this is what it looks like. This should look okay when it's mounted on the back head, but before I can do that, I need to make a gasket. In this clip, I'm cleaning up the mating face of the flange on a piece of wet or dry sandpaper. After which, I press it on my ink pad. Then I transfer the image onto a piece of gasket material. Once I've punched out all the holes using a hole punch and cut out the shape from the gasket material using a pair of scissors, it now looks like this. That's it for this episode. I'm going to go out and see if I can find some paint that's the right colour for the boiler casing. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.